So the new study article 28 uh, of the Watchtower that has just been published on JW.org is about apostate lies and introduces new concepts in the efforts to combat the apostasy in the con congregations. So despite the loosening of the recent disfellowshipping rules, their fight against apostates is still raging hard. According to the foreword of this article, they will concentrate on training ourselves to discern the difference between the truth we have learned from Jehovah and the falsehoods promoted by Satan and our opposers. When one they say opposers, they mean apostates, of course. So under the theme, do you recognize the truth? We read in paragraph three, the following. So it says there, soon the devil will use powerful propaganda to mislead entire nations into taking sides against Jehovah. And that's based on Revelation 16, 13 and 14. We can also expect Satan to intensify his efforts to mislead Jehovah's people, according to Revelation 12, 9. So consequently, it is important that we train ourselves to see the difference between truth and falsehood and to be obedient to the truth. And our survival during the Great Tribulation will depend on it. So the new idea is that compounding apostate lies now is a training exercise apparently for combating the intensified propaganda Satan will unleash during the time of the end. Now forget for a moment that I am an apostate according to them. You know and I know, and the whole world knows that they are liars. Do you remember when Stephen Lett came on JW Broadcasting telling millions of Jehovah's Witnesses that news about CSA victims all over the news being an issue in the organization is apostate-driven lies? Now, not only do they admit there is an issue, they have even changed their policies and tell rank and file to report any CSA perpetrator to the authorities. Who is the liar then? It is there documented, isn't it, on their website. So here's another glaring example from their publications of how far they are prepared to go in order to handicap their members' critical faculties. And that was only two years ago from the Watchtower 2022, uh, February 2022, pages 2 to 7. And under the start of the article 6, do you trust in Jehovah's way of doing things? And it says there in black and white, during the Great Tribulation, we may receive instructions that seem strange, impractical or illogical. Of course, Jehovah will not speak to us personally and <laughs> don't get any ideas. He will likely provide direction through his appointed representatives. That will hardly be the time to second guess the direction or to view with skepticism or <laughs> critical thinking, wondering, is this really coming from Jehovah or are the responsible brothers acting on their own? More likely the second one. How will you fare during that crucial time in human history? The answer might be indicated by how you view theocratic direction. Now, if you trust the direction we receive today and readily obey, you will likely do the same during the Great Tribulation. So, Jehovah's Witnesses are brainwashed relentlessly and are being told lies, whereas the XJW community exercised critical thinking, according to the Bible, by escaping the God Star and are now far less likely to fall for another cult. Who is the better equipped here to stand during the time of the end? You let me know in the comments section. But here's the thing. Now, I know they quote these verses from the book of Revelation to make the case that a strong propaganda will overtake people during the time of the end. But there is a definitive verse about end time propaganda that they never quote. Now, before I get into that, before I read you this verse, let's first look at these two verses in the book of Revelation. They quote, and the first one it says, and I saw three unclean spirits. Uh, I saw three unclean inspired expressions that looked like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the wild beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. 
And verse 14 says they are in fact expressions inspired by demons and they perform signs and they go out to the kings of the entire inhabited earth to gather them together to the war of the great day of the Almighty, which of course Armageddon. Keep that in mind. So that's from Revelation 16 and verses 13 and 14. So here you have the first propaganda aimed at the kings and the whole inhabited earth. But when? At the very end of the tribulation, right? With the sole purpose to gather them to the final event of the tribulation, the battle of Armageddon. Every witness knows that. To be honest, if you have survived up to this point here on earth, it will either be by miracle or you are part of the unfaithful humanity that survives here on earth before that battle. Now here's the second verse they quote in this paragraph. And it says there, So down the great dragon was hurled the original serpent, the one called devil, and Satan, who is misleading the entire inhabited earth. He was hurled down to the earth and his angels were held down with him. And that's from Revelation 12 and verse 9. So now this verse is in a different point in time. They don't say that, but it is. This is right at the beginning of the Great Tribulation, the last three and a half years. But by the way, the Watchtower has taught over a hundred years that this verse started being applicable from 1919, when Satan was hurled down from heaven but the Watchtower can't even remember their own theology, and they speak of it as a future uh, tense in this paragraph. But the most important verse that speaks of end-time deception is the one that really matters, and the Watchtower really never speaks of, but the Bible is very clear. This is the end-time propaganda that you need to ready yourself to identify and escape. And this is from 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 3. And when it says, let no one lead you astray in any way, here Paul says here, look, this is the big dangerous propaganda because it will not come, that means the presence of the Lord, unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness gets revealed, the son of destruction, more well known as most other Christians know him as the Antichrist. In other words, the end times will not kick in until the identity of the Antichrist gets revealed first. And for that to happen, first the apostasy will have to come. And you know, apostasy is a biblical term, right? Apostasy is only something that will take place in the church amongst those who profess to be followers of Christ. Why this apostasy will take place in the church in the last days? Were it in verses 11? And 12 the following. This is why God lets a deceptive influence, which is a great deception or an end time propaganda, mislead them. Who? All those who profess to be followers of Christ. So, so, so that they may come to believe the lie in order that they all may be judged because they did not believe the truth, but took pleasure in unrighteousness. Or righteousness. Now, notice how it says the lie. It isn't any small lie. It is the lie, the ultimate final deception that would lead into the great apostasy amongst those that profess to be Christians at the time of the end and the revelation of the Antichrist. The Apostle Peter, speaking to Christians of his time, gives us a glimpse of the nature of this lie in 2 Peter 2 2 and verse 1. And it says that, however, there also came to be false prophets amongst the people, as there will also be false teachers among you. This will quietly bring in destructive sex that has happened, of course, to all Christian denominations the past 2000 years. But the tipping point where the Christian church as a whole, right, with the Jehovah's Witnesses, will turn apostate and morph into Babylon the Great is in the next few words. And Peter says, and they will even disown the owner who bought them. Who is the owner who bought them? Jesus Christ, right? Bringing them speedy destruction upon themselves. So there is a time in the future that the Christian churches will replace Christ with the Antichrist as their savior, this end time savior of mankind when everything is falling apart in the future. 
Think of it this way. During the years leading up to the Second World War and during the war, Adolf Hitler's face adorned not only every poster in every public square in Germany, but also the picture of Christ was replaced, the one that was hanging on the wall in every classroom. This is just a small glimpse of what will happen during the time of the end. This is the great deception. Talking about dividing the ship from the coats, that will be the moment. This is the tipping point. Side with the wrong Messiah then, and you have signed your eternal death warrant. So, what do you think? Is the Woods Tower uh, correct of calling everyone an apostate? And now claiming that apostate lights uh, fulfill Bible prophecy. Have you ever come across these verses in the, epist the uh, letters of Peter and Paul as regards the final apostasy, the great lie, the great propaganda of the time of the end? And why is it that the Woods Tower is never, never, ever touching on these verses? They never want Jehovah's Witnesses to know anything about the end time deception, anything about the Antichrist, or anything about what really matters, and not just the silly little uh, arguments about anyone who disagrees with them. They just brand them with a name, with this derogatory name of an apostate. So let me know in the comment section, guys, and also you will find the link to this article below on the description if you want to read it on my website jwupdates.com and I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye for now.